good to see you again. I apologise, it's been a while since I've been on the channel talking about jelly prints. Today, I just want to share with you a simple idea for using up scraps of your jelly prints and other fabric you might have around the house to make a simple, stylized Christmas tree decoration. You can see here, I've got three pieces uh, made with jelly plate print and then with a background which actually comes from a pair of trousers I made earlier this year. So something with a nice high contrast is a good idea to use with these. Uh, some of these have been printed with metallics which I think is a nice little bonus. Um, others are just printed in what I consider to be fairly good colours for the season, red and green. And you'll also notice that I've embellished these, just a simple embellishment with a little star button and some zigzagging around the edges. What I'm going to do is show you how simple the process is to make these. So let's get on with it. What we need for this project are some jelly plate prints and some scrap fabric. Uh, I'd suggest something that's a strong contrast to what's on your jelly plate. It can be anything. I'm using this uh, print, which I did just a test print, which has got brown and metallic gold on it. And the fabric I'm using is just um, a printed uh, cotton. You also need a piece of cardboard and the easiest way to do this is to just grab uh, one of those free postcards, whatever, or this is a three by five inch uh, piece of card. You can cut one if you haven't got a free postcard lying around. Uh, some sort of a quilting ruler, uh, preferably one which has got the quarter inch hem marked on it, or again, you can just use a normal ruler and eyeball it. A rotary cutter if you have one, or a pair of scissors. And then just a few things if you want to decorate, and that's purely up to you. I happened to find when I was looking in my stash, some little shell um, buttons. But these ones, there's stars and there's hearts. And frankly, it can be anything. It might just be a shell button, it might be a shiny button. I've also got some ribbons. I just have this box of ribbons, which I keep bits of ribbon that come off chocolate boxes or maybe presents someone's given me, any sort of thread. So I've just literally been raiding my box to find something I can use to use as a hanger on these pieces of fabric. So I'll just clear away these things. I've got my cutting mat out on the table and we'll get started. Now here is the template I use to make the cards you've already seen and I'm going to show you how to do this. It is so simple. It doesn't require keeping measurements in mind or anything more complica anything complicated like that. The last thing we need at this time of the year is overthinking things. So this is the template as it's cut and I'll now show you how we're going to achieve that shape. So. I've got my piece of cardboard, in this case a postcard I picked up uh, just a flyer in Japan ages ago. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to fold it in half or just up the top so I know where the halfway point is. Just make a mark and uh, you can just grab your pencil if you want to and just mark that. You just straighten it out again. Then using my ruler I'm just going to go from the center point there and draw down to the center point on the outer edge just like that and do the same from the top center point to the other corner Now I'm just going to grab my scissors and cut those two side pieces off. And this will give me 
the template I need to make my tree shape. So there's my tree shape and here are the two pieces that are going to be the outer edges. Now the reality is I actually only need those two pieces to make this. So let's get cutting. Now, I've taken my piece of fabric and obviously it's going to be hard to see the temp template outline even if I use a pencil on here. So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, you can flip it over and just use your pencil to draw on the back. And one thing I would suggest here, just double check that you've got it on your fabric, that you're not going over the edge. What you can do, since you've, I've got a quarter of an inch on here, is don't forget, as I'm just about to do, don't forget to add your seam allowance. So in this case, I'm just using the standard quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to draw that down there like that. And go across the top a bit. I'm just going to put that again, resting that marker for the quarter of an inch on the outside of my triangle. Draw that. And again on the bottom draw that and then I'm ready to take my scissors and cut it out now if you're a quilter and you're steady handed what you can do is turn it onto this side again placing your template so that you've got enough space all around it to make your quarter inch allowance for your hem and at this point you can grab your rotary cutter and cut straight along that line. And we're going to turn this around and do the same thing. Again, just making sure that you've got that quarter inch gap around everywhere. Apologies for people like me who normally work in centimetres. Uh, it's just easier, most of the quilting rulers are still coming in imperial measure. But again, just make sure you've left enough space for your hemming. And finally, across the bottom. I think this is the fastest way of doing it. And if you've got reason reasonably steady hands, it's not a big, big deal to do it this way. Now you can see we've also got a couple of um, triangles left over and I'll show you something we can do with those in a little while. I've got my central tree shape cut out. Let's get stuck in on the side pieces. Fold this fabric in half along the straight grain. I'm just going to do a quick check for size. This gives me plenty of space to get my template on and my seam allowance and the same as I did previously I'm actually just going to cut directly with my rotary cutter keeping it in the right place again using the rotary cutter to cut that bit away. And the last cut I'm going to do is just to get my quarter of an inch hem across the bottom. Right. So, now we're ready to go and sew these pieces together. So if you just look at it, that's the way it will be. 
and this will just give you a quick guide as to how you're going to sew it. So now I'm just going to um, throw a pin in each side so easiest I think to get it right if you have your piece set out and then you worry about sewing it on so matching those bottom corner seams I'm just going to throw a pin in to hold that I'm going to go and stitch this seam first then iron it out that way and then I'll do the other seam as well just before I sew the second seam I just wanted to show you something um, when you've sewn your seam it can go either you can fold it either way you could fold it that way or that way I just suggest fold it so your side piece is out but that seam is tucked under now you just need to finger press that top section and the next thing we'll be doing is putting the other piece over here but the reason I do that is that it makes the tree shape actually sit a little bit proud of the background fabric which I think is a nice look so again, so fold that seam towards the tree when you iron it before sewing the second seam on. Having uh, sewn your pieces of fabric together, the next step is to trim them up before you add the hangers and the backing to them. So I'm just going to use my big ruler. I think critical to um, start and get the top sections leveled off first and then use that as the basis for future cuts. And with all of these cuts I'm, I'm really just looking to make straight sides. I'm not looking to make a particular width. Right, next steps. I've sewn both of these pieces of fabric to the central tree shape. I've ironed them flat but I have got it so that the tree shape, I've ironed those seams towards the middle so that the tree shape is just sitting a little bit proud. Now from here on in you've got a couple of options when I did these I was thinking of making them as decorations but ones that I could also write a Christmas message on the back so that's why I chose to put paper if you just want this as some sort of an ornament or a decoration you can use a piece of fabric the only thing I will say is that might not be stiff enough to hold it in place so again you might think about putting a layer of stiffening or fusible interfacing into this to make it stiff. Now with the paper what you want is something that's got a little bit of body so I would suggest a paste paper maybe even a piece of paper that you've done some previous jelly printing on why not that'd be good because the paint will have made that surface a bit stiffer so I'm just going to now back my piece. Before I do that, I need to reach into my box and find a ribbon for hanging. Cut my piece of ribbon and then get prepared to put that in between the pieces before I zigzag around them. I've just got my paste paper here and I'm just really making a very rough cut to make sure I've got the right size. Uh, got my scissors and the way I go. And it's critical to make sure that when you're doing this, that particularly you get the two top elements aligned. So I'm just going to do the other thing which is important. Make sure that I've got the 
paste paper, the right side of the paste paper pointing out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some touches of glue on here. If you plan to do decorative sewing on your fabric, uh, it's a good idea to get this step done first and then this can be drying while you do whatever you need to on the fabric. So all I'm doing is just gluing these, just put a little spot of glue on them, gluing them in place. So I'm just going to put that to one side and then I'm going to think about what I'm going to do with this. I'm embellishing the top of this little decorative tree with this uh, shell button which I have in the shape of a star. Just remember any embellishment you do you will need to do before you take the next steps. So just working out roughly where I'm going to place it and I'm going to just quickly take a few stitches Clearly uh, you can add as much or as little embellishment as you want. All I just remind you to do is do it before you put any backings on. It just makes things a lot easier to do this first and save yourself any troubles later. And there we are, just a little uh, star embellishment on the top of my tree. I thought just to finish off I'd show you the next steps in the sequence so I've put my embellishment on and I've glued my paste paper on the back of my little tree decoration and then I've taken myself off to the sewing machine and I've stitched around with a zigzag stitch now you can clearly use any stitch you have on your sewing machine that you like. I'm just going to carefully cut away that edge. That is all I'm going to do. And there's my finished decorative tree. So here's the results of all my stitching. I'm really happy with the way these have turned out. I want to make a big shout out to Scott Warrender whose mini Christmas tree project inspired me to make these. I also just wanted to quickly show you that I had so many bits left over that I was even able to make a table mat to go on the Christmas table. So thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the new year. Have a great holiday season. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.